All right, in this lesson, you're going to learn another way to solve quadratic equations. It's by use of something that's referred to as the square root property. And in some occasions, we'll also use completing the square. To start, we need to remember something about squaring and the results that we get with squaring. If I have x squared equals some number c, and c is a real number, there's three different scenarios possible. c could be greater than 0, equal to 0, or less than 0. Depending on which scenario, I either get two real roots, one real root, or no real roots. If there are two real roots, they will look like plus and minus root c. Here's an example. x squared equals 9. The roots are x equals positive as well as negative 3. Think about squaring a negative. It becomes positive. So there's two roots. If c is 0, I'll just have one root. Here's an example. If x squared is 0, the only value that makes this true is x equals 0 itself. If c is a negative number, less than 0, you will not get roots. Consider the idea x squared equals negative 1. Well, squaring always produces a positive result, so it could never equal a negative result. Empty set. There are no values that make this true. We're going to need to keep track of that idea as we progress now. So we're going to use the square root property to solve the general form ax squared bx and c equals 0. There's really two scenarios here that we could break this up into. One is, if the b value is 0, what we'll do is we'll isolate x squared and we'll use the square root property. Here's an example. 3x squared minus 12 equals 0. Notice how it has an a value and a c value, but not a b value. We can approach this problem actually two ways. I could say this. 3 bracket, x squared minus 4 equals 0. So what I've done is factored. I can now factor that difference of squares into x plus 2, x minus 2 equals 0. Notice that I could also divide the equation by 3, and if I divide the left side by 3, there'll be nothing left. Dividing 0 by 3 leaves it 0. What that should show us is that 3 is irrelevant toward finding a solution. It doesn't impact the solution at all. This leads to the answers of negative 2 or positive 2 using the zero product rule that we've already talked about. These are your two roots. I could have done this another way. Isolate x squared and use square root property. So let's look at what that looks like. 3x squared equals 12. Now let's divide by 3. x squared equals 4. See how the 3 is gone here as well? Now, using the above idea, I've got x squared equal to a positive answer. Therefore, x is positive or negative root of 4, which itself is 2. So, plus 2, minus 2. The same roots. Two different ways to do that problem. Now, most of the time, b won't be 0, and there will be more work to do. So, let's look at that. If b isn't 0, here's a set of, of steps that you can take. Move the constant term to the other side of the equation. Then, if a isn't 1, divide all the terms by a. Then, complete the square on the left side, just like we've learned to do in the past. Now, you're going to need to add a suitable constant to do that. Do it in a different way here. Add it to both sides of the equation, rather than adding and subtracting. You'll see why in a minute. Lastly, use the square root property. I'm going to go through three different examples here. First one. This is a relatively simple one because it's already written as something squared. So looking back at my steps, I've already got the constant term moved to the other side of the equation. The value in front of x is 1, so I don't need to worry about that. Complete the square on the left side. I've done that as well. All I need to do is use the square root property. So this is kind of like saying x squared equals a number c. Well, then x equals plus or minus the root of c. Remember, we talked about that. This is this. It's just a little bit more elaborate looking. So I'll write x minus 3 eighths equals, I've taken the square root. On this side, I'll write plus or minus the root of 7 over 16. Now, I can break that into two radicals the root of 7 and the root of 16, which itself is the number 4 that can be evaluated. Got one more step to do. Well, actually, a little more than one. I need to remove the term 3 eighths. It's being subtracted, so I will add it to both sides of the equation. Nothing left on the left side. 
on the right side, I have plus or minus root 7 over 4. But you can see I'm going to combine fractions. So let's get a common denominator. I'll double that. I will also double that. So I can rewrite this as x equals 3 plus or minus 2 root 7 over 8. So those are two different values. That's 3 plus 2 root 7 over 8 and 3 minus 2 root 7 over 8. That's what the plus minus conveys, two different numbers. This is an irrational number. Uh, the only other way to write this is by turning a calculator on and, and finding a decimal, but the decimal won't terminate or repeat, so it'll be a very ugly decimal answer that you'd have to round off. I don't recommend that you do that. Leave it in that format. Okay, here's another one. Now, this one is not squared. We're going to need to do a little bit of work on this one. Step one, we move the constant term to the other side. Now, Step two, I'm going to do it on the same line. I figure out the constant that I need to make my perfect square trinomial. Half this number, 1, squared. So I have to have 1 squared. I'm going to add it on both sides of the equation, rather than add and subtract like we used to do. So we can do that because it's an equation. And you can see that, mean, that we've maintained equality. Okay, This side is x squared and 2x and 1. This side is 8. This is now a perfect square trinomial. So I write x plus 1 all squared. Now this problem is like what the last problem looked like. I take the square root by again using the property x squared equals c, so x equals plus or minus root c. So I will write plus or minus the root of 8. I'll remove 1 by subtraction, so it's negative 1. Now, I'm going to rewrite root 8 as a perfect square times the other factor. And the root of 4 is 2. So root 8 is more simply written as 2 root 2. Negative 1 plus or minus 2 root 2. These are my two roots because, again, I had a quadratic equal to a, a number more than 0. Got one more example to work through with you. You might get something that looks like this. Some binomials e equal to a non-zero number. In this case, you actually need to expand this. So I am going to uh, expand in descending orders. I'm going to do the x squared term first, and we see that negative x squared. Then I'm going to do the x terms. I've got 1 times x, or x, and I've got negative x times 2, or negative 2x. So x minus 2x. That's minus x. The constant term is 1 times 2, or 2. All right, I want all terms on one side. This is a negative quadratic term. Let's move everything to the right side to make it positive. I'll have nothing left on the left side. I'll have a positive x squared, a positive x, and 2 will become negative 2, along with the negative 1, to make negative 3. Now, now remember, I'll want the constant term on the left side. So I have x squared plus x on the right. I'm going to move that equal sign over a bit. I need half of this number, so 1 half, to be squared. I'm going to add that on the left, and I'm going to add that on the right. This is now a perfect square tri uh, trinomial, x squared plus x plus 1 quarter. And this is 3 plus 1 quarter. I'm going to need to combine this. This is 12 over 4 plus 1 over 4. So I can write that as 13 over 4. And this is now the binomial square x plus half all squared. My next step is to take the square root of this. And again, what I'm working with is the notion that c equals x squared and therefore x will be plus or minus root c. So I take the square root, and on this side I'm going to take the square root of 13 over 4. My next step will be to move 1 half by subtracting it. So I'm going to have negative 1 half. I can break this radical into two radicals by writing root 13 over root 4, which is the number 2. 
and I can combine those since I have a common denominator to negative 1 plus or minus root 13 over 2. That's it for this lesson. It's just a matter of practice for you now.